Hey guys, welcome back for another episode of The Suited Shootist. Uh, this week, what I wanted to talk about was actually piggybacking off of the video that Tessa over at Armed and Style did last week. I will link to that as well as included in the description. So once you've watched this, definitely go in and check that out because she puts out some awesome content and uh, I, I am a huge fan of what she's doing over her channel as well. Um, before I jump into that real quick, the Bespoke Solutions Facebook group. We've got a bunch of great activity over there. I'm actually kind of playing around with a uh, with a, a topic that we were discussing. One of the members is uh, looking to kind of figure out how to pair jackets with uh, with corduroy, and so I'm kind of playing with some softer, you know, fall textures, tweed-like uh, fabrics, unstructured, and uh, you know, just kind of that that relaxed, uh, you know, slightly more kind of cozy looking type of feel. Um, so what do you think? I mean, I, I'm kind of digging this actually. Um, if you haven't checked it out already, certainly recommend it. And uh, like I said, we've got a bunch of good conversation going on there. Aside from that, uh, still got stickers up as well. So if you want to grab a few of those, by all means, they make great stocking stuffers. So just a thought. Jumping into it. Risk. And what Tess was talking about, excuse me, Tessa was talking about was... Um, the various types of risk that gun owners and gun carriers can encounter. And what I wanted to build on there was that not all risk is created equal. Now, the most common risks that are generally discussed whenever we're talking about, you know, carrying a firearm or other defensive tools is violent crime against a person. Generally speaking, that is going to be, you know, a robbery or an assault, um, can include sexual assault, can include kidnapping, things like that. Those are the ones that tend to be the most common. Those are the ones that you see on active self-protection all, you know, all the time, um, things like that. The next most frequently discussed is also kind of the, the black swan, which is the active killer, whether it be the school, the mall, the workplace. Um, everybody likes talking about those a lot. And the irony there is, is that those are the lowest probability events that we are going to encounter. Now, they are worth discussing to some degree because they are arguably also the most complex and most difficult shooting problems that we are going to encounter because you're dealing with so many unknown variants in terms of terrain, distance to target, number of friendlies, number of hostiles, and all these other factors. But honestly, more often than not, I see it wind up degrading into little more than a tabletop RPG where you're just trying to build a character with the most, uh, the most valuable and effective stats to be able to come up against whatever the, uh, you know, whatever the, the, the dungeon master throws at you. Which is weird that I'm using this analogy because I never played D&D, but that's besides the point. So here's what I'm getting at. Um, a couple years back, Eve Kolsker invited me to participate and kind of be a co-presenter of her business tactical presentation. This was the, uh, it was 2019, no, 2020, excuse me, the, the, the year the TACCON wound up not happening. Uh, and so... Uh, we wound up doing a Zoom presentation, and that was my first exposure to the the risk matrix. And that's what I'm showing you right here. Uh, I'm going to go include a link to one down below as well. There's a whole bunch of variations of this, but really what the importance of it is, is that <clears throat> on the y-axis, you've got the, you know, on the two axes, you've got the likelihood of something happening and then you've got the severity of that outcome and based on where those two lines intersect is how that particular risk gets categorized so using something fairly mundane as an example of just general administrative gun handling which was a main focus point of Tessa's video we do that pretty damn regularly whether you know, it's guns going in or coming out of bags or whether it is loading and making ready, whether, you know, if you're at a competition or on the firing line or, or what have you, 
dry practice, um, you got somebody coming over and you want to show them your cool new toy. There are so many circumstances where we are presented with the opportunity to screw up with firearms handling that the probability of it is honestly fairly high simply because of the number of opportunities that we're presented with. Now, that can be mitigated by responsible gun handling and, uh, and uh, you know, a series of, uh, of conscious decisions that take place. And the severity of that fluctuates. Worst case scenario is somebody gets hurt or killed. And so because of that, the administrative gun handling has carry, is fairly high frequency of something happening and fairly high consequence. So that would be categorized as a very high risk. And that means that more attention needs to be paid. More measures need to be taken to help mitigate that risk. Um, in terms of violent crime against a person, the way Tom Givens breaks it down when you look at the actual uh, crime statistics, you've got about a 1 in 30 chance in your lifetime of being subjected to some form or fashion of violent crime. It's not necessarily saying that you've got a 1 in 30 chance of getting in a gunfight, but the odds are a lot higher than most people care to admit. Um, so again, fairly high likelihood, fairly high consequence, and so the measures that we take to address that are going to be things like carrying your firearm, carrying intermediate force tools, having good situational awareness, good verbal agility, and uh, good social skills so that you can see a problem coming from further away, you can possibly get deselected, you know, a whole, a whole host of options on that. So again, that's one of those where because of the relatively high category risk, there is a lot of thought and effort that should be put in to mitigating it on the active killer side. Again, very high consequence. Likelihood, considerably less, if we're being honest. Um, and so even though the severity is the same, the overall likelihood is such that it's not intellectually honest to categorize that at the same severity as the, uh, to steal a, a quote from William April, you know, the, the, the interpersonal conflict on the quarter of state in Maine at midnight. So not saying that it's not something that should be thought about, but the idea of practicing 25 yard headshots, if your verbal agility ain't up to speed, or if your empty hand combatives ain't up to speed, or if it's been a minute since you've had a medical class, you know, where are those priorities really going? At what point are you really training for something worthwhile versus just training for the entertainment value? Um, and again, this is not just in terms of the criminal elements of it. I, I talk about this a lot in terms of the interpersonal aspect because every interpersonal exchange that you have is another lottery ticket, potentially, of being discovered armed, if you're armed. And so the likelihood of being discovered, especially in frequent social circles or something like your workplace, the probability of that is pretty damn high because people are more observant than a lot of folks give them credit for. And a lot of folks are not as slick as they think they are when they when it comes to their ability to conceal their tools and or the explanations and justifications that they might have kind of already preloaded to explain away the, uh, the the benign curiosity. And the other part of it is people assume that it is a direct A to B where somebody's going to look and go, is that a gun? It typically doesn't go that way. There's usually a couple more steps in the process. They're going to recognize that something is deviating from their template of normal 
and then they're going to start asking themselves why. And it's going to generally result in more scrutiny, more questions, possibly some gossip, and all of a sudden you've got this kind of snowball of you're getting paid more attention to, people might be uh, drawing conclusions based on prior conversations or prior social media activity or all sorts of things. And so it almost turns into this game of telephone where they may end up walking themselves to the conclusion, possibly for the wrong reasons, but if they got the right answer at the end of the day, that's what complicates your life. And especially if we are talking about something in the professional arena, well, while the stakes of finding yourself in a position of having to find new employment are admittedly a whole lot lower than not being around at all. When you factor in that the probability of experiencing that slightly less severe negative outcome is greater than the probability of experiencing a higher negative outcome, on a lot of these risk matrix uh, layouts, those tend to be the same category of risk, if not the getting made bumping up a little bit higher. And so this is why the, the risk assessment process is, is critical. Dr. April talked about this quite a bit and what he would generally speak about was as it pertains to the violent encounters where he would just go through and, and find you know, news stories in the paper, things like that. His uh, They Are Not You Tuesday posts were prime examples of this, and you can still find them on the April Risk Consulting Facebook and Instagram pages that I'll link to down below. They're phenomenal resources. And uh, Chris Fry over at MDTS Training is, is kind of bringing that back a little bit, so follow him as well if you're not already. Anyways, what he would do is he would look at these scenarios and, and just kind of war game them in his head or go through the exercise of how would I kill me? Um, you know, the idea being is, is that if you're truly being honest, you can identify where you are most vulnerable. And once you've identified where you're most vulnerable, you can go through and address those weak points. But honestly, those exercises should expand beyond just the violent encounter. You know, it's have you hardened the, uh, you know, the security in your home? Um, what measures do you take professionally and socially to insulate yourself and manage those expectations to reduce the possibilities of a negative outcome? Uh, the simple kind of hand wavy solution for that is, oh, well, I just don't talk to anybody and or, um, you know, well, I don't hang out with any insert disparaging remark about political affiliation here. Um, you know, essentially just insulating yourself only with like minded people. Some folks can do that. Some folks choose to do that. Some folks are in a position where that's not really uh, a, a viable option. So things to consider. When you look at this risk matrix, and it's it's something that I really think everybody should be familiar with, print off a copy and actually identify what risks exist out there for you in terms of, okay, where does getting mugged in the Walmart parking lot fall in? Where does you know being present at an active spree killer uh, fall in? In terms, and uh, categorize all those together work, school, you know, mall, sporting event, whatever. Um, where does illness fall into that? You know, again, Larry Lindemann likes to say you can't shoot a heart attack in the face. So, you know, if you can run a two-second bill drill but not run up a flight of stairs, again, where's the priorities? Um, and taking that risk evaluation and expanding it to really the things that have an ability to negatively impact your life as well as your quality of life. This is not a comfortable exercise, which is why people tend not to do it. Because a lot of this involves you envisioning how you can lose. It's not fun. It's downright uncomfortable. But if you are genuinely dedicated to the idea of trying to be harder to kill, then knowing your weakest spots 
that's low hanging fruit. So is this an exercise that you've already done? Let me know. Put it down in the, in the comments if you've done this kind of thing before. If not, what has this video gotten you thinking about? I'd love to hear about it. And uh, if you like having conversations like this and you want to support the channel directly, the Patreon is alive and well. I have a couple new signups in the past few weeks. Guys, thank you so much. You are what keeps the channel running. I do greatly appreciate it. Aside from that, I hope everybody has a great week. Stay dangerous and stay sharp. Mm -hmm.